Um, I will remind Maxine. You broke your um drone. Drone, and you were going to take it to the repair shop. Maxine is on a phone call, and she is not thinking about her drone. But I'll remind her. How dare she? It's clearly more important. Okay. Um, um, after I send what I think are the funniest ramblings to the group, um, does the crew already have, like, camping gear that's been supplied? Uh, you ha don't have camping gear? Um. Like sleeping bags and stuff? Or no? If not, I'll just go well, buy it. Yeah, like, Probably so you have, like, have it because you've got a place to stay. So. so you do have in your packs, I did reference, you have thermal blankets and things like that. Because you have packs that if you like dr are going somewhere, um, they want you to be safe in the wilderness, right? So uh, as I mentioned, I think it was like the first episode or maybe the second. You have packs so that when you go out into the wilderness, you'll be safe. And I think Oliver asked me, um, can I just say it's like, oh, I have this in my pack. And I'm like, yes, if it's reasonable that you would have it, then you can say you have it in your pack. Because he's like, can I just say I have rope in my pack? And then I was like, yeah, that makes sense. So I meant more but like sleeping bag or something. I feel like that full, like, you're staying out in the forest, we probably wouldn't have with us all the time, but it would be easy enough to buy. Oh, fine. I'll go buy one. Because we, we have what we need in case of an emergency out there, but I don't think we have what we need to purposely go, like, tenting. Um. So, two things I would like to buy after I'm done staring at ramblings long enough. Um, a sleeping bag or like a cot or something probably just a sleeping bag um and is there anywhere in town where I could get like an old tape recorder not a digital one like a cassette record tape recorder your best places to look for that would either be Tremaine's Curiosities or Evans Antiquities. Okay. Um. Also, wouldn't hurt to look for some sort of older camera that's not digital. Same uh, also, uh, just to remind Frankie, because she wasn't here, or they weren't here, um, we recommended that kind of stuff to Tom as well. So you would likely know that we've talked to Tom about getting uh analog stuff not digital just because we're because of the energy issue right so you'd, you'd know that already too yeah okay. um i guess i'm gonna find tom in that conference room okay hey boss man uh he holds up a finger he's like on the phone at the moment yep yeah. yeah. okay yeah, we're uh, we're collecting a lot of good evidence, and he like widens his eyes at you and is like nodding. So uh, we'll we'll be able to get an episode uh, ready for you right away here, and um, it'll follow one theme. It sounds like we're fighting like some sort of finding uh, like some ice monster or something. It's gonna be super cool. You're gonna love it. All right. Uh, well, I'll talk to you later, and um, I'll keep you in the loop. All right. See ya. And he hangs up. What's up? Any word on that analog stuff to help with that awesome episode? I mean, I was just told this morning, but yeah, uh, I do have some tracks on it, but it's going to be a bit before it gets here. All right, I just figured I'd check in. Yeah, no, no. Um, is there anything specific you were wanting? Because they just told me analog stuff. Uh, a, like, cassette 
audio recording device would be great, not a digital one. Like put the okay. tape in. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and if you can find um, a backup camera that runs on tape and isn't just digital files, that'd be so nice they asked too. they asked me for that. Yeah, it makes sense. However, yeah. aren't most of those battery operated? Yeah, but there's more of a chance that it won't corrupt on a tape. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I no no, I get that then. Yeah. Um but like yeah, there's we run the risk of the battery dying, but any footage it captures we won't lose. But let's say this monster thing whatever we're gonna call it crypt creepy cryptid whatever um let's say it powers down the camera like as soon as you enter the room what's that gonna do for you i mean same thing with a tape recorder to be honest but i'll i'll get you your stuff i don't know whether it's gonna work for it that's just a backup yeah no no i get it uh you're probably looking for about a week it'd be about a week out we can't get it's we don't have same day delivery here, unfortunately. Uh, kind of missing the city for that reason, but you know. I just wanted to, to see if. Never mind. No worries. Cool. I'll get it for you. Um, I'm gonna head out to the. And let's go to antiquities. Uh. Finally. We finally go to the antiquity shop. Okay. And I'm gonna ask about like nothing. <laughs> Get cursed objects. What? Roll down there. Alright. Uh so you head down to the antiquities shop. Evans Antiquities. Uh it's a charming old world store. Um exterior is just covered in ivy, but it's kinda dead right now. Like it's it's still cold out. Um, as you walk in, it's just a treasure trove of curiosities with glass display cases, vintage furniture, and various antique items. Um, you kind of get a slightly dusty scent of old books mixed with like different fragrances of aged wood and faded paper. You get like a feel of nostalgia um, with every item that you see. Um, Occasionally you'll hear like a chime or rustling of pages, a vintage clock that will go off, or you hear the ticking of it. It's kind of like a step back in time when you go into here. Um, let's see if I can get you the picture of who you're going to run into. Give me a second. Evan. Is it who? Evan. No. Ebenezer. No. <laughs> Where is she? I mean, in a place full of this money, old things? Probably. This is her. Oh, it's a girl. Oh, it's a girl. Okay, there's Echo again from somewhere. Yeah, I hear it too. Oh, no red hair. Oh, look at that. Look uh, at that. So, you see this girl. Um... And she is. Uh, one second here. Evan was my uncle. <laughs> Ebenezer. I think when there's echo, it's coming through cat. No worries. It's only occasionally. I don't know what triggers it. No idea. Uh, I have so. Changed no worries. Uncle Ebenezer was the best collector. Hey, everybody, in all... everybody, stop. Um, she uh, is reading a book behind the counter and she looks up at you and she's like oh hi um, I wasn't expecting anybody today uh, it was we're kind of in the slow season uh, what what can I do for you how what what are you looking for anything in particular or just here to browse oh probably browse eventually but um <clears throat> i was wondering if maybe you had a couple of uh old like cassette uh voice recorders laying around oh, i thought you were gonna say like cassette that. players and i was gonna say yes i have plenty of them 
Uh, tape recorders. Though. I'm looking more for like the tape recorder. Yeah. Um, um, and specifically tape, or are you looking digital, or? I'd rather not. I've had a few issues out in the woods with my digital, so I'm hoping to go more analog. Not a problem at all. Honestly, I like the analog versions as well. Um, kind of satisfying. Yes. Hearing the hearing the tape roll as you're... It just fills you with like a sense of... This is how things are supposed to be, you know? Hmm. Anyway... Uh, I think I have one or two. Let me, uh, let me look around here. That'd be awesome. So she, uh, wanders into the, uh, area a little bit as she's looking around. She's like, feel free to browse while you're here. Anything else stands oh, yeah, out to you? Just kind of, like, rifle through things, see if there's anything, like, interesting looking. Maybe, like old military style looking memorabilia or something cool looking i don't know are you looking to add to your outfit like a pin that looks really weird okay <laughs> oh we got the puppy back he's going to bed so i'm on puppy duty ah fair enough um i don't know why he didn't just take her to bed i know right it's okay you can stay up past your bedtime. It's okay. Um, sorry, I'm just. Uh. Looking for something here. You want me to fill the airspace yeah, with the gator noises? Yeah, go for it. Is that, the, is that the sound gators make? <laughs> this one. Depends how fast you're going. If you're going okay. fast, it's more like... I mean, what you could do is... Um, you and... Uh, Oh, what's his name? You and Charlie can talk on your way out to the uh, <laughs> place. So, uh, Charlie. I have been muted. What's up? Uh, tell me more about this altar. Uh... It looks like a pedestal, two foot wide, few foot tall, uh, weird writing covering it. So, if we're able to move this thing, what do you think we should do with it? Uh, for now, we have to keep it somewhere safe, try to get some footage of it, but uh, I'm good. if we can get it somewhere safe. I'll reach out to my old contacts and see if they can do anything with it. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Uh, I don't know if I, you know, I understand you got people you trust. I don't know if I trust anybody but us. Like, honestly, um, because I don't know if we need to maybe destroy this thing or if we need to just like bury it or whatever we do, we got to make sure that nobody can get hurt by it. Yeah, my contacts will take it to somewhere where it won't really be accessible to anyone. I mean, I don't I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but, you know, my experience with the military is that the military will use whatever they can to further their own interests. You're hearing about the American military. We're Canadians. <laughs> Oh, does that make a difference? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think there was much of a difference, but hey, you know, I'll just I'll take your word for it. No, I actually had a few ideas about that. Uh, since Elias is not probably getting out anytime soon, um, I thought maybe we could store it at his place. But that would be a good spot. I don't know if it's a good idea to bring it back into town. 
Yeah, it's not until at least until we know what we want to do with it anyway. Okay, so as you're looking around the store, and she's kind of moving stuff around in the back, uh, you come across some uh, Victorian morning jewelry, um, some antique medical instruments, vintage photography equipment, um, different, like, oddities and curiosities this ranges from like taxidermy stuff anatomical models or just artifacts from around the world um some maps and globes uh vintage scientific instruments uh and antique clocks and timepieces. <clears throat> as you're looking uh... at this she she does come back and she's like oh you found some of some something else that might be of interest to you? Uh yeah, I might grab some of the morning jewelry that you've got hanging out over here. Uh so there's uh one that's a black onyx coffin. Um and there's another one that's a jet weeping willow and a glass skull oh for sure um which one which one are you interested in um i actually think i'm gonna grab the coffin and the skull while i'm here okay for sure Um, um, and then I have a choice for you, uh, between two different tape recorders, um, both okay. of them relatively same quality. Um, the only difference is this one has a longer recording time. Um, like battery life, the tape size is how long the recording is. Yeah. Um, Actually, I don't think tapes come in different sizes. I could be stupid about that. Uh, they do come in different sizes. Oh, they do. Okay. Uh, let's just... We'll go ahead and do the one with um, longer battery life, just to be safe. All right. Perfect. Um, and she brings you over to an antique cash register, because everything here is going to be antique. Oh, um, fun. And she starts punching in some numbers and it makes the old cha-ching noise as the drawer pops open. She's like, all right, it is uh, great doing business with you. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, come back anytime. And she goes back to her book. Um, now that I have a analog tape recorder, um... Before the sun, like, fully sets, Frankie's got a dumb idea. That's fine. Hopefully it's not something that needs the security around. That's fine. Um, so, go bag, obviously, sleeping bag, tape recorder, Are you going to go sleep in the cave? I'm going to go camp out in the cave. I'm not necessarily going to sleep. But I'm hoping the thing pops back up. Uh, random question. Do you have a backup character? <laughs> <laughs> um, may or may not work. But we're going to figure it out. We'll go looking and have a second monster and Frankie is missing. Look, I'm working off of the theory that there's only one of them, okay? And that theory being that one of them is Rachel. So... Well, I'm saying you missing second monster is you're the second monster. Um... <laughs> I'm going to... 
Okay, I just want to check on one thing. Are you telling anyone that you are doing this? Okay, that's why. That's why I figured. I feel like right now Victor and I would not be paying attention to the forgot, GPS, like, thinking that if you're once in town. Things. It's got the little tracker thingy. I've got the radio. I've got my phone. I, just, I have all the things. So here's the thing. Like, here's the thing about your phone and also kind of the radio. When you are in, let's say, I don't know, 15, 20 feet of stone, doesn't always work too well. I have them just in case. Right. We won't even have GPS location of her. Well, oh. yeah. Hmm. You'll be able to see my last, like, pinged location, though. That is true. Which would be right outside the cave. <laughs> I mean, uh, I could hang out inside the cave, but it's more likely to be kind of a little more effective it, if I'm in. It also technically would be warmer inside the cave. I was going to say not technically, but then I remembered the creature that's inside the cave. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's what Frankie's doing. Maxine, I don't know if Victor, I don't know if Victor told you. But I reminded him that you broke your drone. All right. Where did Wyatt take his shot? Yeah. So I'm gonna take my drone and go to what was the name of the store? Thompson's Repair Shop. I already I already dropped you there. Oh, well, you just dropped me off. Well. Nobody else is moving their characters, so yes. Right. Yay, Frankie listened and moved their character immediately after I said that. <laughs> oh, and so You're did like, Charlie. I do it all the time. <laughs> I'm in the woods. <laughs> hey, so I'm taking... Cause... Do I remember what happened to it? Did something you crashed it into a tree. Stuff? Yeah, you broke two blades and no, cracked no. something else. Okay. So yes, I'm going in. Yeah, you broke two blades and cracked one of the arms that holds said blade. Okay. Yeah. I'm going in. Is anybody with me or I'm up? No, no, the two guys are gone, right? Yeah. They are on their and way out. Frankie to the... decided to go off on her own into the, the forest. Because mm -hmm. that makes total sense. Yeah, she's gonna die. We'll see. By the bear. Bear? Bear? Yeah. <laughs> On her way to well, the cave, she gets dumb, mauled by a bear. I'm smart enough to run if stuff goes south. I don't know. I don't they think you run. could Wyatt, outrun a bear. Wyatt tried throwing a chocolate bar and some toast, so... That did not Just remember work. if it's brown, lay down. If it's black, fight back. If it's white, good night. And guess what? There are some white ones up here. <laughs> Actually, during our uh, our world building, we said there were some pizzly bears here, which I have removed that because that just sounds weird. <laughs> But it's funny. In our world, global warming doesn't exist and Paisley Bears never happened. Alright. Anyway. Um, R.I.P. Paisley Bears. They were never supposed to be a thing in the first place, Frankie. Uh, okay, so. Uh, I don't need to send what this guy... Oh, look who's here. Oh no, Wait, sorry guys. Wyatt. My food didn't agree with me. I haven't been feeling so great. Is that Wyatt talking? Yes. But it's a manly voice. He had puberty. I told you I don't feel well. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to the repair shop. Yeah, one sec. I gotta fix cameras because why it joined why it broke it 
Sorry for breaking things. No, it's cool. I'd prefer you be here than me care that much about... Are, are you hopping on camera or no? Oh. You, you're just you're just in the Skype call. Uh, anyway, I believe you know what. Uh, there we go. Uh, and then you'll want to turn on your background so nobody else gets in the shot. There you go. Perfect. You two are on the same planet. We all are. Just so I have a suspicion aware. all of us are on the same planet. We're both on Texas. I mean, I don't know about the lizard man. I, even if I am a lizard man, I am currently on the same planet. <laughs> Maybe. That suggests I'm not from the same planet. Or aren't the lizard men from like underground or some shit? Something like that. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I believe you guys... Oliver. I believe you guys have already seen the picture of Oliver or Ollie. What? Uh, the guy who owns the repair shop never was Is also named introduced. Oliver? Okay, he was named before Oliver was, so the, don't even. <laughs> there's two Olivers, right. there's two Charlies. <laughs> okay, the one Charlie is a, just a nickname. Her actual name is Charlotte. <laughs> I feel like this is the repair guy. Is it? Is he got a beard and a hat and a bunch of stuff on the a belt? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh, right. The all the belt full of unknown tools. <laughs> yes. Shut up. Anyway. Best uh, belt ever. You walk into the store and it makes like a ding ding noise. Uh, and he comes out to the front you know what i you already have the picture and he's like oh uh, i haven't seen you around here what can i do for you hi i've i've got a broken drone here oh. um okay yeah i'm hoping that you can fix it for me i by the way my name's maxine what's your name uh my name's oliver oh okay it was nice to meet you oliver I mean, you don't have to sound so shocked, but it's nice to meet you too. No, no, no. I know, I know another Oliver, but he's. I mean, two people can have like the same you. name. I I realize that, but yeah, it's just this other Oliver I've just re recently met too. So anyway, yes, back to why I'm here. A drone. I've got yes. this drone that has been broken, and I'm hoping that. You will have the parts or something or well, be able I'm to get the parts. I'm telling you right now, I do not have the parts. Um, I'm yeah, not sure. I, I mainly do cars. Um, oh. I can help you out, likely. Okay. Um, I'm pretty good at fixing things. But it's probably going to take a while for the parts to get in. Um, I'm going to need to borrow that for a bit. Well, it's not too many good as it is, as you can see. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, you'd need all four of those to run. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, uh, if you give it to me for a bit, I can, uh, where are you staying? At the, is it the Nahani Lodge? I know, I always forget. The Nahani Lodge. Uh, I can drop it off for you when it's done. It's on, sure, my, it's on my way home anyway, so. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, but yeah. don't don't get um, too excited. It's going to be a while. Okay, well, you have I'm a guessing, cat well. Rubbing its face on your mic there. Uh... <laughs> uh, go ahead. I can't use it now anyway, so yeah. No, I I'm hoping that's that. Fine. Uh I'll get it fixed up for you, don't worry. Hey, um Is there any chance that I don't know what kind of delivery service there is up here. Is there any chance that if I paid extra that I could get it a little bit faster or No. Like the pieces or 
No, we, eh? We have... It's very remote up here. You're lucky that Yeah, we, no, I get it. Yeah, you're lucky that we can even get anything. No, I'm... I'm very happy that you're even able to deal with it, because, yeah. I stupidly did not take into account the wind, so... It kind of wreck things for me so yeah yeah no it gets pretty windy up here especially yeah, you're with not the kidding. water and in the valleys yeah it's it's a windy one anyway yeah. i'll get this fixed up for you and then yeah i'll uh, give you a call well uh, not call sorry I'll, I'll come and drop it off yeah okay well thank you so much oliver thank you for your time yeah for sure And you leave? Yeah, I'm leaving. Somebody somebody keeps having to... Uh, they're having some allergy attack here, so... Ah, so you have to mute. Yeah. Got it. I have to mute constantly here. Got it. But okay. yes, I'm leaving. Okay. Uh, so, um, let's go back to... Actually, Wyatt, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna go find Charlie. The by the name, right? Charlie, as in our party member, Charlie, or Charlie, as in the yeah. He and Victor are heading out to the woods because they're gonna try and take away that altar. Yeah, I get the wrong name. Cats, what's the cat's name? Frankie. Frankie. Frankie, that's who I meant. I'm gonna go find Frankie. Frankie is also off on her own in the woods I, without telling anyone. <laughs> they have kind of I mean they weren't like sneaking out, but they slipped out of the lodge. And didn't with, say anything to anybody with their else. Go bag. Frankie, where are you? Badoop. <laughs> you forgot the Badoop. Uh, it's just me, Badoop. <laughs> I'm going to caves, Badoop. I'll meet you there. Badoop. Uh, at this point, by the way, Charlie and Victor would be too far away to hear that on their radios. Yep, but Maxine wouldn't be. Maxine would not be. You are correct. All right, so what? So Wyatt, you uh, grab your go bag and run into the woods after Frankie. Absolutely. Uh, Maxine, you did hear that on the radio, but I don't know what you want to do about it. Yeah, I'm. Um... I'm gonna grab my rifle when I go to. Oh. Oh, it has a rifle. It's not going to be the creature that kills yeah. Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> he trips and accidentally shoots her. It's not going to be the creature. It's going to be the fourteen-year-old with a rifle. Yeah, the fourteen-year-old with a rifle offs Frankie in the cave. In the cave. <laughs> Why do you think I was trying we to find go, Frankie? We go to find Frankie, and it's like, oh, the creature killed them. As there's a bullet hole in their head. <laughs> Their chest is if just we, full of fuck shot. If we thought if we thought why it was traumatized before, that would put him over the edge. Just wait until you find out the truth. Um, okay, so <clears throat> Frankie, <coughs> sorry, I'm choking. As you uh, are wandering into the woods, you hear. Uh, light but also aggressive footsteps coming up behind you uh, at a quick pace I'm gonna slip behind a tree real quick swing the and axe <laughs> and just stay quiet and wait until I hear 
and see the quick footsteps like run past me, and I'm gonna just grab at the bag and just like gank for a little bit. <laughs> oh! Relax, it's me, kid. Oh, okay. I was about to butt whip you with my rifle. Right. I'm terrified. I mean, I would be if I saw a 14 year old with a rifle running at me. There wasn't no accidental fire of the rifle when Frankie grabbed him. That's what I was curious about, but maybe he had the safety on, like, a, a good rifle owner. Uh, anyway, so you guys wander through the woods. You know the way. You get to the cave. So, did you hear about the them trying to pin it on some crazy uh altar turning people into monsters yeah that's what i heard also uh trees are sentient um, well i mean yeah they're all connected truth is a cosmic banana peel <laughs> i mean i don't know if no. you've seen the science but like trees are supposedly interconnected at the roots to kind of form like one giant uh, entity supposedly the they can communicate Elias's ramblings he meant more like they're interdimensional sentient beings not like the trees talk to each other oh, it's like the trees are watching that. yeah that, that's, that's not how it works um, but I, I, I have heard that they can release pheromones to let other trees know when they're getting attacked by beetles so that the other trees can release toxins to make the beetles not want to burrow into them. Yeah, it wouldn't be the craziest thing I've heard today. Or red. <laughs> Primarily <laughs> red, I would say. <laughs> Okay, so is uh, is Wyatt planning on spending the night here with Frankie? I'm like, <laughs> we're like in the cave and I'm setting up and I kind of stop and look back. Just so you know, this is really stupid and really dangerous. What? 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 What are we? What? What are we doing? Apparently, this thing is Rachel. So, since Elias is probably on a psych hold for a few days, I figured why not ask Rachel the questions. Probably won't work. Probably get attacked. I'm gonna try it anyway. Well, if we get attacked, I can defend us. Yep. We got this. So you know. So I'm kind of camping out in here, hoping the thing shows up. All right, I got this. I'm going to go lay out my sleeping bag. And I'm going to get my backpack and bunch it up. And then I'm going to lay down and put the rifle over the sleeping bag and lay down and guard the entrance. Okay. Uh, currently, it's probably about 1, 1 p.m. Currently, it's about 1 p.m. So, it's right, probably going to be a while. He's a little zealous. I'm gonna just... I'm gonna fiddle with stuff and get it kind of set up and... Okay. See if things are recording just normally right now. And then... So you record for a little bit, and then you rewind and play back, and yep, everything's coming through. No worries. Hey, mad. Did you say my name? I did. What's up? Can I make a 
Is that the in upside down McDonald's logo? That's their yeah, that's the anime thing that they're doing right now. Uh tune in. Isn't that uh, um I think you can let me just read this here. It's not McDonald's, it's Wick Donald's. It's Wick Donald's. Because it's not just the logo, the McDonald's on it, they switched the M. Yeah. So it's a McDonald's. Uh, logo. yeah, you can go for it. Ooh. What'd you get? Oh, no, I got a seven. Oh, nice. So you get to ask one question. Um. Who is the monster going to attack next? I was actually Frankie. staring. I was staring <laughs> right at that question. I'm like, that's going to be it, isn't it? Um. <laughs> Um, so here's the thing, um, I guess, yeah, you, you're already laying down, you're kind of in bed and, um, you kind of drift off for a little bit. Frankie, you hear snoring coming from beside you. Um, it's it's only like one thirty in the afternoon, but you know he's he's had a rough morning already. Um, and Wyatt, you dream about literally what you just it, dealt with. Uh, you had uh, a weird encounter with a weird man, and that really sticks in your head. And you keep seeing Elias appear to you over and over and over and over again. Is there one where of him like in a bloody pool on the ground, potentially? Kind of like flashing. You know what I mean? Where it's like, Elias, Elias, bloody mess. Elias, Elias, Elias. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. But there's one of him screaming. Because yeah. as you've as you've found from like different things that you've heard, uh, you don't really think that this monster is trying to kill or attack anyone. But you never know. Opinions can change, as I've stated before. He knows about the banana pill. He's got to die. Yeah. He knows about the squirrels. Yeah. The infinite oh, acorn could have been secret. It was never meant to be known. Yeah. I gotta go. You're fine, Frankie. Uh, all right. Packs <laughs> up his bags, throws them in there, and just takes off into the woods. So, quick question for you. Bye. Now, now that you're acting on this, um, I thought that Wyatt didn't believe any of these. I don't, but I don't know what's going on, and I want to go find out what's going on. Okay, I just want to make sure. Uh, okay, let's switch over to Victor and Charlie, now that Wyatt has had his go. Uh, by the way, if you are acting on this answer you get a plus one to your rolls uh victor and charlie you arrive at the clearing where you found uh the oh crap i don't think you guys thought this through yep because we couldn't drive right to it. Yeah. I just thought of that when you started talking. Yeah, that was exactly what I but, thought of. I'm like, there was no way to get there in the mule. But sleds can do make stuff easier to pull. We'll need to drag the sleds out ourselves. Okay. Yeah. If you guys want to do that then. But yeah, you get 
to the clearing where you found the tree breaks and branch breaks and whatever brush breaks um, and you start dragging your stuff through the woods and you find your way to his cabin again all right now where'd you guys go from here this way oh we have it i have it marked on the gps yeah so you go there no fog no nothing it's all oh, no clearing. you're walking through fog but are you the hearing thing anything is, uh yeah you're hearing like whispers and voices and stuff But the thing is, the fog, you managed to get through the fog before, and also you're following a GPS now. Um, and then on top of that, the there was no fog around his cabin, and there was no fog around the altar. Like, in a weird, almost like, this is my spot, you're not allowed here type of thing. Uh, so yeah, you come to the clearing where the altar is, and literally it it's almost makes like a perfect circle. Uh, there is no fog in that area. Now we just need to get that onto the sleds. Alright, well, let's see. I kind of expected that we were going to be dragging this with a mule. This might be harder. Just the two of us. But we're, we could do it. Let's it's not see if that we can far. First, let's get it chained up. See if we can keep it from, you know, making us yeah. icy. And yeah, so then, I uh, tie, I loop one of the ropes around it and snug it up without actually touching it. Because you can do that. No, yeah. I, I'm, well, you don't have ropes. You have... Ratchet straps. Ratchet. Ratchet straps. Either way, we can wrap it around and tighten it. Yeah, no, I know. I'm. I, that's kind of what it's for. Yeah. Um, and then we try to pull it over. Shit might be about to hit the fan. We'll yeah, find I out. I think you're going to be acting under pressure here. Um, <clears throat> give me a second. Oh, uh oh. oh. This cover is trying to do something under conditions of particular stress or danger. So oh, maybe not. Oh. Oh no, there is danger involved. So yeah, I would say. But would because say it would be a phenom phenomenon or mystical effect, I still use weird instead of cool. Yeah. So we're all. One second. Um. I'm just trying to, I want to make sure that we're doing this properly. Um, uh, there it is. Uh, yeah. I'm afraid of failing this one. Ooh, 11. Nice. So that means you do what you set out to do. And yeah, just based on the, like, what Act Under Pressure has, the on a 10+, plus you do what you set out to do. Uh, on a 7 and 9, I give you a worse outcome, hard choice, or price to pay. I mean, that, to me, seems like what you're trying to do. <laughs> like, that gives me the best response for you. No? Know what I mean? Yes. Well, that, like, <laughs> investigate a mystery, kick some ass, all of these other ones, they don't make sense to roll in this situation. That's what I'm saying. Oh, right. Like, okay, I understand. Because they have, like, questions or, like, you're fighting somebody, but act under pressure is the best result is you do what you set out to do. This is what you're trying to do, so that makes sense to be the best one to roll. Right. And yes. if I we, failed, we... I would have pulled and it landed on me. Yeah. <laughs> And we understand that you're not just trying to use what we have none of, so we get it. We get it. Well, he rolled with weird, so it doesn't matter. He has plus two. 
Um, True enough. Anyway. Um, okay, so. You do what you set out to do. Uh, so you're strapping up the straps and everything. Both of you, like, strap it onto the front of you and, like, just start running in one direction to, like, knock it over onto the sleds. And sure enough, with, like, enough... You're, like, keep on running back to, like, walking back to the altar and running in the other direction. And walking back to the altar and running in the other direction. Trying to, like, get enough momentum to knock it off its kilter. This, this is going to leave a mark in the morning. And sure yeah, enough... Because if you're doing that, every time you it times out, or runs out, you end up flat on your back. <laughs> no, not with both of you. It'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, you do it enough times and it does, like, knock it loose from the frozen ground and you manage to get it onto the sleds. Well, that didn't go as well as I was expecting. No, that was a lot, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. But now, that was the, probably not as hard as it's going to be to pull this thing, but hopefully the sleds allow this to move quickly. Yeah. It, it should stop most resistance. So, uh, we strap it onto the sled so everything's secure and drag it back to the cabin? Yeah, that's where you guys were leaving it, right? Yeah. Okay. Luckily, uh, does the fog move around it as we do it? I was just about to say that. Luckily, as you're pulling it, you are having a lot easier time traveling or traversing through the woods because you do have a clear path. As you move the altar, the fog does not touch you. And on top of that, you hear no voices. Are you uh, seeing this, Charlie? This altar definitely has an effect on the fog. I wish they were here recording this. This is this is pretty good stuff. Uh, we have it in a way it's a lot easier to move now later. We can always come back out. True enough, true enough. All right, so my thought is once we get it back to Elias's cabin, we'll uh we'll kind of hide it in the cabin somewhere, somewhere we can or at least, you know, Somewhere where people won't find it easily. It doesn't have to necessarily be inside, just somewhere yeah, where it's not going to be I believe there are steps. I believe there are steps to get it inside, so it might need to be... Like, if there's a pile for firewood, we could kind of hide it among that and under snow. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, you guys... It, it, the thing is, getting out here is, is a trek. So that alone is, you feel pretty confident that you're able to hide it away from people. Yeah. Right. And this, us doing this and getting back, it would probably be kind of a all-afternoon thing, I feel. Yeah. 